What is up guys? My name is Eric and today, October 24, we finally got our first spoilers for Commander 2016. And well, as soon as I saw it this morning, I immediately started brewing up a deck for Atraxa. Now, uh, it's written on scrap cardboard I had laying around. <laughs> so uh, you kind of have to forgive me, but uh, I mean I can't get the card since it doesn't come out for at least two more weeks. But we have Atraxa Praetor's Voice uh, for white, blue, black, and green. You get a 4-4 Angel Horror, it's obviously a legendary, with Flying, Vigilance, Death Touch, and Lifelink. At the beginning of your end step, proliferate. Now. Before anybody asks, that's, I wrote that word for word, I just didn't do the proliferate uh, reminder text for anybody who does not know the specifics on proliferate. You choose any number of permanents and or players with counters on them, then give each another counter of a kind already there. That is the official wording of that. So with that, I immediately started thinking on uh, what I could do with this. At first I was thinking, oh well, super friends, because if I proliferate at the end of the turn, I'll just put in more proliferate cards, and I'll just do that. And there are ways you can do it, but as I started to do my test plays, I was like, this is kind of boring, I'm not too into this. So, some of the other ideas I had while I was doing that was Voltron, uh, specialized in plus one, plus one counters, and a uh, band with a splash of black. But that one's not super interesting because those decks are already kind of a thing. You know, I might already have one of those, but uh, not everybody does. So I, I, I kind of get that. There's a little spoiler of one of the cards in the deck. Now, ah, and there's a spoiler of a bunch more. I'm a mess new. So, yeah, it, it really got me thinking. And, and this is what I have so far. I've built already four different versions of this deck today. And this is what I have at the moment. There are cards that I am missing because I wanted to do this and share with you guys what I came up with so far. And I can't go and buy the cards and have them within the next five or ten minutes to do this because I always buy online and that takes almost a week. So, yeah, this is what I have at the moment. There will be changes and I will definitely be putting up an updated video after I get some more changes made. Just a few more. Uh, I'm going to go test play it with some friends. I'll get a video up to see the progress that I have made. So we have Atraxa. We know all about her now. And by the way, even without the proliferate, four mana for a 4-4, four -four, yes, it's very specific on the colors, but I mean, you, there are so many different kinds of lands out there. It's, it's not hard to come up with these. Maybe not always on turn four, but turn five is pretty easy, assuming you don't miss a land drop. So for four mana, for four four flying vigilance, death of its lifelink, it's already so good, and then it proliferates. I'm not super concerned about the proliferate; it's there and it's an added bonus. But uh, just being a nice beefy general is, is nice. So there's that. To start out, I, I always sort my decks by color, creatures. You'll see. It, it's I try to keep it rather organized. To start out with Anna Fenza Kintree Spirit. I like her a lot because it's a little creature heavy, so it's not going to be hard for me to bolster. And when I do bolster, whatever, proliferate at the end of the turn, and it can get uh, just out of control. Silverblade Paladin, uh, Soul Bonds, Creatures of Double Strike, hilarious. Uh, but you could do with any creature. Archangel of Tides is just kind of in here. At the moment, just just for fun, because uh, I had one and and there there was room that that'll probably get the cut real soon. Abzan Falconer is in here definitely for the proliferate side. Uh, I, I like I said I started very heavy with the proliferate theme when I built the deck, but is it going to stay that way? It's slowly been changing, and the proliferate is just sort of kind of an added bonus, not so much the focus as of late. But if I do focus on it. Plus some counters across the board. Now they all have flying, so how do you go wrong? The very worst, with the tracks in play and the Falconer, just those two, you outlast with him once. Well, now he's a 3-4 with flying. That can be proliferated at the end of every turn. He just gets bigger and scarier. Linvala, Keeper of Silence, always good. Uh, always, always very nice to lock out your opponent's uh, activated abilities. And then it's not like some of the cards where it's just on your turn or their turn or whatever. This is just activated abilities of creatures your opponent's control can't be activated, period, as long as it's in play. Linvala is great. 
Abzan Battle Priest, the same thing as the Falconer, but for lifelink. Bane Slayer Angel, just because good angel. Micaeus the Lunark is something I really enjoy because if you do, if my test plays every time I've got Micaeus, what I've gone and test, test plays, I've, I've just been doing it by myself, just running through the deck, you know, so I haven't actually test played for real. But every time I, I have Micaeus, I usually make X2 or 3 if I'm very high on mana of 4 or 5, but usually it's 2 or 3 because with Atraxa in play, I'll immediately go and remove a counter from him to give plus 1 counters across my field. And then at the end of the turn, Atraxa will put the counter back on Micaeus, as well as make everybody else that much better. So, Micaeus, very nice. Cheap at the moment, probably spike on that a little bit. Path to Exile, Swords of Plowshares, gotta have your spot removal. Griff's Boon, uh, giving Atraxa flying is kind of pointless, but plus one plus oh, and for four mana you can bring it back from the graveyard at sorcery speed onto a creature you control. It's That's always nice. Godsend, uh, equipment, because... It, I'm, I'm trying to attack and, and have just big creatures and scary creatures. We have a Johnny Call of the Pride. Uh, proliferate will work on loyalty. Plus one counter on a creature. Proliferate, he gets another plus one loyalty. And then your creature, wherever you put your plus one counter, also gets another one. A Johnny Steadfast, uh, because minus two, put a plus one counter on each creature you control. And a loyalty counter on every other planeswalker you control is just nice. It's so nice looking. It's kind of kind of the reason I wanted to go Super Friends is just Johnny Steadfast right there, but not really him and, and Chain Veil. Not not really the the best. Elspeth Knight Errant, just kind of the same thing with loyalty. I I pretty much have an Elspeth, this Elspeth in every EDH deck that has white in it because it's just so good. Uh, and then planes, two planes. On the blue. Now my problem here. Mono blue and mono black are light. I have multicolor cards in here, obviously a bunch, since it's playing all but red. Uh, so the blue and black sections are very small. We have Thrumming Groot, deals common damage to a player, proliferate, simple as that. Uh, Chasm Skulker, whenever you draw a card, put a plus one counter on him. When he dies, you get X11 squid tokens, or X is the number of counters on him. Well, when you draw a card, plus one counter, he, he makes his own plus one counters. And then with attracts it, it becomes two, and it can get out of hand real easy, especially since it's a three drop. Like that a lot. Jason Rattler of Secrets because my other Jaces are busy, but he's still a fine Jace. So um, getting the emblem, nah, not a high priority. It's usually scrying over and over again, getting getting more counters on him, and then when I need it later on to get through minus two, I've never really looked at the minus eight, no matter the deck I'm playing. And then Island and Island. What I tell you, blue's pretty short, huh? On the black, Thought Gorger is a card that I've always liked. Four mana for a 2 2 trample. When it comes into play, it gets a plus one counter for each card in your hand, then discard your hand. It's, it's not discard however many cards you want, it's just your hand, and that's that. But when he dies, you draw a card for each plus one counter on him. Well, let's say he comes down, you throw away two cards. He's a 4 4. With a Traxa or Thrumming Bird, anything that makes it proliferate or get more counters, you're just adding into it. You're investing into Thought Gorger. And so I want to use him. Will he stay? Yeah, it's a little bit tougher. Uh, I can't really make the decision now. I've always wanted to like Thought Gorger, but it's, it's kind of tough. Phyrexian Arena, because they printed it again in Conspiracy, the most recent Conspiracy. So they're pretty cheap. Anybody can get them now. They're two, three bucks. Um, there's there's really no reason not to play Phyrexian Arena in a deck that has black. Uh, Nexilus Reignited, he's spot removal for creatures, and he's draw power. The emblem, eh, if you get it, okay, but I, I just like everything about Ob. Swamp and Swamp. Black's pretty short too, huh? Green's heavy though. We have Monvoli Beast Tracker. It's a 2 1. When it comes into play, you search your library for a creature with Death Touch, Hexproof, Reach, or Trample. It's a tutor. It's, it's a nice tutor. I like it a lot. Tusk Card Captain. Uh, same thing as the other uh, Outlast guys, just plus one counters and then trample. And this is something that doesn't have trample. So if you get a plus one counter on here, great. It already has the flying and the lifelink that the other two give, but trample just adds to it. Mana Gorger Hydra seems very appropriate here. You cast it, then your next spell gets a counter on it. If, if this is your turn three and that's your turn four, it gets a plus one counter. Assuming they played nothing, I doubt they're going to play nothing on their turn three, but let's say they, they play one thing, so this, their thing 
gets it to counter. You play a track that gets it to counter. It's a 3 3 trample. And to turn, you proliferate, and that's a 4 4 trample. So good. I love it. Mana Gorger Hydra is perfect for this deck. Fertilid. Uh, I have eight basics in here. Eight is a little light. I think I'm going to bump that up to 10 or maybe 12, so I have three of each basic. But Fertilid goes and he takes lands out of your deck, puts it into play tapped by removing a plus one counter. Well, if you do it once, Atraxa, once Atraxa, he never goes down. So just take out all your basics. Polycranos is big. He can help remove things because when he becomes monstrous, he fights. The... Proliferate is kind of whatever, but he's big and he can fight things. He's, he's just big in spot removal. I like him a lot. He might not stick around too long. I don't know. Rancor, same thing as Griff's Boon, but uh, it just goes back in your hand. You don't have to pay four. Beast Within is great removal. Again, printed in Conspiracy 2. Super easy to get them now. They're no longer like five or six bucks a piece. Kodama's Reach, go for land. Cultivate, go for land. Explosive Vegetation, go for land. Doubling Season, and behind it I have Primal Vigor. These two are about to get cut because the deck is not super heavy on plus one counters like it was when I first built it. These were, I felt these were auto-include right from the start. They're still good because not only does it do plus one counters, it also does creature tokens. They both do creature tokens. Uh, doubling Season works for you, and Primal Vigor works for everybody so yeah, it, it's not bad I like it a lot but uh, yeah these two who knows how long they're gonna stay they might get cut fairly soon Grok Primal Hunter uh, makes, makes beast tokens and then he's green draw power that's what I like about him in, in my tests when I got when I got him I easily did minus six for six worm, uh, six six worm token for each land you control it's that's scary it's easy to do in this deck forest forest so that's that. Now we're on to the multicolored cards, which I love me multicolored card. What we got here is we got Quasali Pride Mage, 2-2-2 two, 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 Exalted. It's kind of the, the idea is, is, is Bant focused with combat with the Exalted, but if it doesn't, if the Exalted doesn't go, I'm not, I'm not upset. Uh, you can sacrifice him to Disenchant. Killspire Avenger, Exalted is the main focus, 3 for a 2-2 two, two Exalted. Then, you know, destroy a creature that dealt damage to you this turn. It, yeah, it, it'll come up, maybe. Witchmaw Nephilim. The thing I wanted to do a while back was make a deck with him as the general, and if I had done that, everything would be fine now. I wouldn't have had to, you know, put all this together today. I would have already had the deck, but Witchmaw Nephilim, I think, is a perfect fit for it. I didn't even tell you what he does. When a, you play a spell, you may put two plus one counters on him. When he attacks, he gains trample if his power is ten or greater. So I think I think he's awesome. We have here Plaxcaster Frogling, Graft 3, so he starts with plus one counters to proliferate easily. Then with Graft, you can move them on creatures that just came into play. What it does is for two mana, a creature with a plus one plus one counter can't be targeted by spells or abilities. So just, I, I like the Frogling a lot. Edric, I think everybody knows Edric. Uh, he's very political. He's, he's even in a non-political deck, he's great. 3 for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its control may draw a card. So political, uh, because if they attack you, they don't get a card. You're almost pushing them to attack their opponents, but sometimes a card isn't enough. So don't be surprised if they still attack you. Trigon Predator deals combat damage. You naturalize. You disenchant. I, I love him. I put him in every deck that has blue and green. We have Rafik of the Many. Uh, exalted. Whenever creature you... Control attacks alone, gets double strike on a turn. Rafik is great. He's one of the main focuses of many Voltron and aggro decks in Bant or close to Bant. Atraxa kind of works with it. Sort of, kind of. If you have Rafik down and you attack with Atraxa, it's nice to have a 4-4 flying, vigilance, death touch, tr lifelink, and double strike. Don't be surprised if they block it, though. Stoic Angel, I think, is great. Uh, mostly just because it's, it's a favorite of mine. I just... It's, it's, it's kind of a nostalgia thing. It's, it's okay. Players can't attack more than one creature during their untapped steps. And then four for three, four Flying Vigilance. It's a good card, uh, but I'm, I'm a little more biased towards Stoic Angel. I'll admit it right now. Fathom Mage. Uh, four mana for 1-1 one, one Evolve, which is creature with higher toughness or power comes into play than it on your side of the field. Mm, under your control, yes. Uh, whenever a plus encounter is placed on it, Fathom, on Fathom Mage, you may draw a card. So, with Evolve, you, this down, Atraxa, gets a plus encounter, draw a card. At the end of the turn, you proliferate, draw another card, just like that. I love that. 
Nine to Nualara feels very appropriate in a four color deck. Each other multicolored creature you control gets plus one plus one for each of its colors. So, good, colorful lord. Seamless Cat Swallower, just a 6-6 six, six flying triple shroud. Abzan Charm, love the removal in an EDH. It's not going to be too hard to remove some, find something that's power three or greater. Or you can draw two and draw, lose life. Or two plus one plus one counters. It fits the whole deck. I love it. Sultai Charm, not so much, but I still like it. It's spot removal for a monocolored creature, artifact, or enchantment. Or you can draw two and discard a card. Mortify, destroy a creature or enchantment. Vindicate, destroy a permanent. Uh, let's kind of tuck this away. There we go. This is pretty much all the spot removal right here. Uh, anguish I'm making, exile target not land, you lose three life. Uh, Putrefy destroys an artifact or creature, can't be regenerated. So I don't have a lot of removal in here, and uh, I understand that that's never really a good idea, but that's what I'm going with for the moment. I will probably put in more later. And I have no wrath effects, I'll probably add a few of those, because what deck doesn't need to clear out the board sometimes. Here we have Behemoth Sledge, equip creature gets plus two plus two, lifelink, and trample. Amazing. It already has lifelink, but making it a 6-6 with all those abilities, great. Finest Hour is enchantment. It gives exal it has exalted on it, so it gives more power when you know attacks alone. It's the first combat of the turn. Untap the creature after this phase. There's an additional combat phase. Just felt so appropriate. A Johnny Mentor of Heroes. Uh, the middle effect can get cards, but he's mainly in here for the top effect of plus one, distribute three plus one plus one counters among one, two, or three target creatures you control. Well, with him, Atraxa just proliferate, bam. And he'll get another counter from the proliferate. Then we have the non-basic lands. There's quite a few of them uh, because it's a four color deck, so you obviously don't just want a ton of basics. I balance it all out so that every duel, there's four. So there's, well, I'm just gonna rip through them real quick so you can see every single color pair has four of them in here, and then we have, in the back, provides all the colors in one way or another. I say that because Opal Palace, you gotta pay one and filter it through. Uh, Mana Confluence, you lose a life. City Brass, you lose a life. And then uh, Rupture Spire, Trans Guild Promenade, you have to pay one, it comes into play tapped. Command Tower is obviously just the best one. I thought about Trilands, but Maybe I'll drop one of each of these and put in some Trilands. I don't. I don't really know. I don't have a lot of Trilands at the moment, so it's it's a possibility, but it's not something that you absolutely need to have right away. Looking at artifacts, we have Commander Sphere for helping with mana. Start a new pile here. Locks and Warhammer. It it fits with the you know try to fight theme. Sword of Feast and Famine, Sword of Light and Shadow, Sword of Fire and Ice, Sword of War and Peace, and Sword of Body and Mind, which what deck doesn't make, the, the, the swords don't make better. I mean, they're just, they're so goddamn good. They're so good that I just spoke English poorly right there, but they're so good. You, you can put them in anything that has creatures in it, and, and it's great. You know, you could probably put it in something that doesn't play creatures, and it would still help out some, because kind of deck doesn't has zero creatures and you know expects to win but anyway that's my Atraxa deck right now in its early stages I'm gonna go through and test it what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna shuffle this up and I'll show you a little test draw a couple of them so you kind of get an idea of how the draws look in the beginning of the game how I would do it and um, yeah just just get an idea of that so yeah stick around for a minute I will shuffle up I'll be right back all right, guys, and we are back. I'm just gonna shuffle a couple more times on camera to show you guys that I'm not not stacking the deck in any way to make it look better than it really is, or worse, or whatever, what have you. All right, so there we go, and to give it a quick cut there. All right, so to start out, we're gonna have Cultivate, Chasm Skulker, Forest, Vindicate, Anafenza, Golgari Guildgate, and Finest Hour. This is not something I could, I would be happy with keeping. Um, two land is, is bad, but with a Cultivate, it's risky. But uh, you know what? Everything in my hand except Finest Hour costs two or three. So let, let's try it. Let's, let's see what happens here. We're going to go ahead and keep it. Uh, let's say that the opponent goes first. So you get a draw. So on your turn, you get to draw. Yeah, that's not good. 
go ahead and play the rot farm. It's even worse seeing as how we have a rot farm and a forest, but I'm banking on that cultivate. So next turn, that's not good. Three, four, five, six, seven. Next turn. All right. Well, that's turned out poorly. Um, oh, there's a big mana pocket right there. Huh. All right. Well, sure. Let's just keep it going. Go ahead and uh, cultivate. I know that that looks pretty bad, but uh, it's what it is, you know. Uh, there, are, there are times in in my play group we are we are rather lax and casual about it. So if we get somebody who's drawn just garbage after after a few draws, you know, we say just go ahead and pull a basic out of your deck. Who cares? We're, we're trying to have fun, you know? But, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's my play group, and we are, we are quite casual about it. We're just having fun, you know? I know a lot of people take EDH rather serious in their tournaments, and they're all about wizards. Come on, guys, go ahead and make it sanction and all that other stuff. Uh, I'm, I know that looked weird. I'm trying to do it from a distance here. Uh, I'm, I'm just, we just have fun with it. We, that's all we try to do. So, yeah, I'll do a little cheating there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, we'll throw away a good option because of that. So go to the next turn. And now we draw land. No problem at all. Isn't that interesting? Let's see. I think a good way to start... Let's see what we got here. We play the planes. And then we're going to go ahead and do, uh, with Command Tower, we'll double white for Anafenza, and then blue and two for Chasm Skulker, which will trigger Anafenza, so we bolster. I got uh, a mess of dice over here. We'll go ahead and put, there's one. All right, and that doesn't do a whole lot else other than just that, so go to the next turn. Commander Sphere, all right, that's that's not terrible. Let's play our land for turn. Mm, I'm I'm really feeling a Traxa right now. Oh, missed missed that trigger. Gets a plus one counter there. Let's let's do let's do a Traxa. Uh, so we got our white, blue, black, green. A Traxa, uh, trigger and offensa. She has the lowest, so she gets the counter. Then, depending on how the field looks, they probably the opponent probably has a creature down by now. It is turn six or seven. Uh, I mean, I have six land in play, so it's definitely not sooner than turn six. Um, if they have something down in the way, don't. But if it's if they're wide open, I would say attack with the Chasm Skulker. I I, I would be okay with this. Let's see. Um, other than that, I, th I think we just pass a turn. At the end of the turn, Atraxa will proliferate. And there we go. Take a look at our hand. Not a whole lot going on there. All right. Next turn. So we get to draw. Triggers. Goes to four. Now, what do we want to do? We have six lands. If we play the Commander Sphere that puts us at three... And the sphere, so four mana. Um, vindicate if they have something threatening down. Beast within, same deal. Uh, let's see. Thought Gorger is something that I don't want to cast with five more cards in hand, especially not these cards. These are good looking cards. Finest Hour, I'd be okay with losing, but let's see. I want to say that we do. Yeah, I, I, th I think that's a good way. To go here, um, three for Fertilid. Uh, Fertilid will come into play with two counters. Uh, trigger and Offenza. My lowest is now Fertilid, so bolster Fertilid. And then, if we want to, we can vindicate. If or if we need to, we can vindicate or Beast within. Uh, if if not. I would like to try to get a land out of the deck uh, at the end of their turn so that we still have Beast Within. We have the mana up for Beast Within uh, at the end of the turn. So I feel like right now 
to to go about our turn, we go to combat, attack with a Traxa, and maybe Chasm Skulker. If they have something to stop Chasm Skulker, maybe not. Definitely a Traxa, though, being uh, Flying Vigilance, Death Touch, Lifelink. With Death Touch, they don't want to block so much. With the Vigilance, it stays this way. You know, Flying is evasive. You guys know. I, I feel like attacking with a Traxa would be perfectly fine here. Ending the turn... We would get to proliferate off a of Traxa, and there we go. Y you see how it just kind of goes and it snowballs. Uh, let's go through the deck for a land. What are we missing? Swamp. We're missing a swamp. Do, do, do. Swamp. I'm just going to give it a super quick shuffle with just the cards I looked at because I'm about to scoop them all up and do another hand. A hand where I don't have to cheat. Cheat. I'm not really playing, so I say cheat. Uh, so that goes down to three. Go to turn. Draw a planes. So we have going on here. Seven land. Play our planes. So we're at eight land. Uh, looking at that and what we're holding, I think we'd be in a pretty good spot here. Sorry, holding them off camera there. I think we'd be in a pretty good spot here. But. Um, that should be a six. I'm good at remembering. Yeah, I, I, I feel good about this. Obviously a rough start, but once once you get stuff going and making their own counters on, on whatever, Atraxa, the proliferate, is is just such a great bonus. And, and like I said, even without that bonus, it's nice to just pay four to get a full four flying vigilance death touch lifelink. It doesn't even need... It doesn't need Death Touch or Lifelink if it was just Flying Vigilance. 4-4 four, four Flying Vigilance uh, proliferate at the beginning of your end step. I'd still make a deck out of it. I'd still be playing it. But uh, the Death Touch, I feel like whatever. The Lifelink makes me go, yes, please. I am more than happy to take that. I think what it's supposed to be is uh, Flying for blue, Vigilance for white, Death Touch for black, and Lifelink, I guess, defaults onto green, since Vigilance is more of a white thing than it is greens. Uh, green has some Lifelink. Well, not so much Lifelink. They life gain through other means. It, it does have some, but not a lot. I'm just kind of rambling while I shuffle. Don't mind me. Alright. Seven cards. Bad deck. No. No. They're new sleeves, so it's... You guys know, it's to be expected. So looking at this hand, it's good. Start with the land. Which Mon Nephilim's not bad. Command Tower. Forest. Okay, I already feel confident about this hand. We got our fourth land, fifth land, sixth land. Not so confident anymore. Not so confident anymore. But I'm going to keep it because the Nephilim is playable. And so, obviously, Atraxa is playable, which will trigger the Nephilim and then proliferate. You know, I'm just going to go. I'll, I'll just go. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Rafik, another four cost. Uh, obviously, play your tap lands when it doesn't matter so much. Uh, Scout Barons. Okay, here we are. Uh, of course you get get that. Had I drawn that earlier, I would have played the Scout Barons over the Dismal Backwater, but you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. So what I want to do here is white, blue, black, green to play the Nephilim. Uh, go to next turn. Here, play Opal Palace, because why not? Uh, it just feels so appropriate here to then take this and go, well, we'll just go ahead and make a white out of it. Wait a minute, let me double check this. If you spend this mana to cast your commander in his battlefield with a number of plus one counters on it, equal to the number of times it's been cast from the command zone this game. Okay, so I want to make sure it wasn't, like, after the first time it does something. So the first time it does, so white. Uh, blue, black, green, which will just rearrange those, and this is the first time a Trax is being cast from the command zone, so she comes into play with one counter. Uh, I say she, I'm actually not sure. I didn't pay attention to the art. I was just so excited to see that they got one out there. So that happens, triggering the Nephilim as well to get two plus one counters. Then you can swing with the Nephilim. You probably wouldn't because it's only a 3-3. Three, three. But we end the turn, proliferate, and look at that. We got a five or a 6-6 six, six, and a 4-4 four, four already in play, just like that. It's nice. So we draw a Beast Within. It's good removal. 
drop a land. And now, I think what we want to do is, based on how much mana we have, if we have triple white, which we do, right here, uh, we want to go ahead. This, this is what I would do. Uh, I mean, obviously, you, you can make the argument of, well, what do they have in play? Maybe we want to remove it, but just the way it looks right now, just just kind of screwing around, doing a little test draws here. Play Anafenza that triggers the Nephilim to get two more counters, and then to follow that up, we go uh, white, white, blue, green, one, to play Rafik of the Many. That'll trigger the Nephilim to go to seven, and that also trigger Anafenza, who has the lowest toughness. Um, so we defaults onto her. <clears throat> Looking at that, that's a great setup. We have something to trample over if need be. We have a piece of removal, and we have something to slow them down if they're going wide real fast with lots of creatures. So now, looking at this, I would say we'd be okay to swing with the Nephilim as an 8-8 with double strike, or swing with a Traxa, which is a 6-6, flying, vigilance, death touch, lifelink, double strike. So you could do 12 in the air, or if they're wide open, you could do 16 on the ground. Both excellent choices, I think. Looking at that, this is a great, great startup. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and shuffle up one more time. We'll get one more in there. Uh, just, just so that we can have, because if I did two tests, it'd, it'd feel weird to me. I don't know about you guys, but I, I think that'd be, that would feel awkward. So let's go ahead and shuffle up real quick. I'll shuffle this way just because it's, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Who cares? Whatever. I'm not, I'm not even looking at the cards. I'm, I don't want you guys to think I'm cheating. You, you know what? If I don't want you guys to think I'm cheating, shuffle the shuffle the way I would in in uh, tournaments or with my friends. So we go ahead, and give it one more quicken. All right, and then uh, give it a cut. So we got three and four. Stay. Good deck. All right. So we have two land and explosive vegetation. Well, I want to say that I learned my lesson, especially since we don't have green here to cast it. So we'll just go ahead and <laughs> mulligan. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm aware I'm not doing the proper mulligan. Some people still do the partial Paris. Uh, my my group of friends, what we usually do is this right here. We'll set it aside if it's if if it's not a playable hand, not if it's not a good hand, if it's a playable hand, but bad, because uh, you have five lands and you can play like some creature that doesn't do anything. It's playable. You have to keep it. And honor system, which is all obviously something you can exploit. But we usually just do like this. There's three lands. Um, green, green. I can play something. So and beast within. So yeah, this is this is playable. We keep this and we shuffle this. If it weren't playable, whoop. If it weren't playable, we just go ahead and set it on top of the the first hand of seven, and then draw a new seven, because we're just you know like I said, we're just trying to have fun and play, uh, just play some magic, you know. So we're not going to go and enforce the mulligan rule too too hard in in a casual EDH environment, you know. All right, it's, it's it's messy. Whatever, just all right. So to start out, let's say that we get to go first. So we'll drop our tap land. Let's see, um, command tower, and we don't have a two drop. No, we do not. All right, next turn, temple of malady, temple of malady. Go ahead and do three to play the beast tracker. Almost always in this situation, I think I would take mana gorge or hydra. Um, especially in the early game. So many so many cards in here, but there aren't as many options as uh, you would think because while this has Trample on it, it doesn't actually have the ability, so it doesn't count. And it's it's a little difficult. I've wanted to put this guy in a deck for a while and none of them felt, felt appropriate. He doesn't even get something with Flying. You get something with Reach to kind of mock you, I guess. But uh, it's, still, it's still a fine card. It might not make, make the cut after I do some test plays, but... It gets Mana Gorge or Hydra, and I, I've, been, I've been happy with taking the, the Hydra every time. So 
take Mana Gorge or Hydra, goes into our hand. Just a quick shuffle here. And by, by quick, I really do mean quick. Just one and a cut. All right, there we go. And then we have a 2-1 in play. So we go to turn. Uh, player Temple. This, is, this hand does not look amazing. Uh, we scry one. It's Phyrexian Arena. Oof. We can cast it when we get it, and it would help us. It doesn't help immediately, but yeah, I think that's something we can keep on top and be okay. Um, then we have three mana. Mana Gorge or Hydra. You end your turn. We, I'm pretty sure that they would cast something on their turn. We'll go ahead and give them a counter. Go to turn, Phyrexian Arena. Now, now the question that I have is, do we play the arena, or do we drop a Traxa as soon as possible? Um, we, we can cast both, because here's your, here's your double black and one. Um, Atraxa is white, blue, green, black. Right there, white, blue, black, green. Black comes before green. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, I, I want to say Atraxa. Atraxa just feels more fun. It triggers Mana Gorge or Hydra to get a counter, and then you can go ahead and... Uh, swing with it if they're open. If not, that's okay. Pass the turn. He gets another one from the end of turn. Proliferate. Draw. Oh, it's a land. That's better. Play it. Um, now that we have a Traxa down, I, I, feel, I feel okay playing Phyrexian Arena. We don't have anything in hand, but... I mean, if, if you've played this deck before with your friends, that or if they just think of the possibilities being white in the deck, Maybe you can bluff them with uh, Path to Exile or Swords of Plowshares with a Command Tower. Maybe a cheap counter. I don't know. Something. Uh, we end the turn. Proliferate. Uh, oh, Phyrexian Arena puts this at 4 and then Proliferate to 5. Uh, they, they cast something on the turn. Let's go with that. Sure. Draw. Oh, Ob Nixilis. He's nice. So now, looking at our hand, we got we got plenty of options. We can play and you and equip a sword, either one of them. So we have protection from red, white, or white, black. Those are nice. Linvala locks them down. We can a Johnny to go draw two cards from Frexian Arena because I know what I'm doing. We have a Johnny to go uh, plus one counter on each, or maybe two here to try to catch them up. And then uh, Attraction will start proliferating all three like crazy. We could drop. He'll also benefit from Proliferate. We could drop Ob and draw another card. Uh, Abzan Falconer is not super important, but if we just cast it, it'll trigger the Hydra, uh, so to go to an 8-8 with Flying and Trample. So there's an option. It, it, this, this is the thing I like about it. Four colors, and it almost feels messy. Uh, it, it just kind of feels like you're going to take cards and just shove them in the deck and and I'm not saying that like like I'm I'm perfect uh, I had this in the deck in the original build because it's it's a good card five sure it, it's hard to get the white and black in four colors three colors sometimes it's hard but five for four four uh, flying lifelink divinity of pride gives plus four plus four as long as you have 25 or more life if you haven't taken a hit yet it's an eight eight for five it's so good but in here it doesn't fit uh, I had inexorable tide Wolf or Silverheart. Psalm Simulacrum is probably something I, I will put back in. Uh, Revelark, I feel like I had a lot of targets for it, but eh, then I looked at it again and not so many. Especially when I took out Sim Simulacrum and Echo Mage and Merrick Nightblade. But uh, yeah, th there are things in here. I don't know why I bother with Prime Speaker Z Zagana, because she comes down and then the plus one counters just make her bigger. Who cares about the plus one counters after that? You can swing with her, but it's not like if you put more counters on it, you get more cards. Experiment Krage seemed like a lot of fun, like you could really be abused with Atraxa, and then he gets all those abilities. But, uh, yeah. Gilder Baron, I wanted to do it to double counters, uh, and also Varel, but Varel would be a lot easier because you tap to do it. Uh, Gilder Baron untaps to do it, and that's that's a lot harder to do. Zemek Guild Mage, eh, you move a plus one counter, draw a card is okay. Uh, you can have a creature come into play with an extra counter. If you pay, it's okay. And then I have uh, six Planeswalkers, where I tried to, Vraska 2, seven Planeswalkers, i show them all here. I, I tried Super Friends first, that was the first thing I tried. And it was cool, but it didn't work out so well. There are a couple other things in here. Uh, Gisela, obviously I didn't put in because it's a flip card. 
and uh, these are clear sleeves, so you just kind of ignore that. But yeah, th there were there were a lot of ideas I had here, uh, and that, that's cool. I love that a lot. Being four colors, you have those options. You know, you can do Super Friends, Voltron, uh, Black Bant, which is just kind of Bant with a hint of black for whatever reason. Uh, there's plus one plus one counter theme, which I didn't exactly go for a counter theme here. Uh, there are 19 cards, I believe, that have counters or make counters. Uh, so it, it's kind of there. It's it's not a super strong theme, but uh, I feel like this is the way I'm going to go, and I'm going to try to do things with counters. Uh, I'll probably drop the swords because they're they're just kind of there. And like I said, what deck doesn't get improved from having the swords in it? It's it's almost just an expensive and an easy way to to build a deck and just be like, look, it's good, yay! And I'm not knocking anybody who plays the swords. I'm just saying, swords are really easy to do, especially since they give protection from two colors at a time. How often are you playing against a monocolored deck? Even even then, with all five swords in here, it's not hard to do it. I I intentionally avoided. Tutors for equipment like Stoneforge Mystic and whatever the giant is, Stonehewer? I think it's Stonehewer. But yeah, it's it, it looks real fun, it looks real promising. I might make it more uh, counter heavy, uh, like plus one counters and loyalty counters and stuff, not counter spells. But um, I'm not sure yet. So I wanted to get this video up here uh, to show you guys what I have so far. And what I want you to do is keep your eyes peeled on my channel. Uh, you could subscribe to the channel. That would that would help you keep track of that. To subscribe to the channel. I just try to speak here uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this deck, and in a few weeks I'm going to have tested it with my friends. I'll get their opinions. We'll go through and dissect it, and I will come back to you with that information on what we feel is a great way to play Atraxa. And I'm hoping to get that done before the deck even hits the shelves in stores and have this all set up and ready to go so that you guys, right from when you can get the deck on the shelf, you already have an idea of what to do. And if you don't like how I'm playing it, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what could make it better, what would be a better way. If instead of doing it the way I'm doing it, if I went Super Friends, if that'd be, if that'd be better... Uh, do keep in mind, I, I mostly play in a multiplayer format, so it's three or four players per game. So one-on-one, -on -one, Super Friends would be a lot better. Uh, that, that could be why I chose not to do it. Uh, but my, uh, my group has a thing for hating uh, control decks, and Super Friends feel like they're almost always control. So th there are a couple of reasons why I didn't do it, but I don't feel Super Friends is a good deck choice in a multiplayer environment. So I'm going with this. I might change it up to more counters, like I said, and we'll see what happens. But uh, for right now, this is what I have. I'm going to take this to my friend's place. We're going to do some tests and see how it turns out. So for all of you watching this video who stuck through to this point, what is it, 35, 40 minute video now? For all of you that stuck around, I thank you. I hope you enjoyed watching what I have come up with what I'm hoping will work, and if it doesn't, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and be like, well, this is, this is the best in my mind, so screw you. If, if this looks like crap and somebody says so in the comments down below, I mean, I don't have to be a jerk about it, but make, make a decent argument like, man, why are you playing that card? And I'll be like, you know what, that's a good point, here, let's make this change, you know. It, you guys will kind of help me build it, and if I can help you build the deck, great. That's the goal, that's what I'm hoping to do. So, thank you guys for watching. Remember, subscribe to the channel so that you can get the notification when I put up my next video. I do gameplay videos a lot, uh, but I love magic. I, I just I play a lot of games and just want to share that with you guys. So some, some, if that sounds like something you'd want to watch, subscribe to the channel, leave a like. Thank you guys for watching, and I will hopefully see you in the follow-up video that will come out. I'll shoot for like November 8 or 9, so you guys have a few days to watch it before the, the decks actually hit the store. So thank you guys for watching. And I will hopefully see you all in a few weeks.